So before we get into how to flash D-Shot, we should probably talk about why it's better and analog versus digital. Uh, so this is how the old analog standards work. You have uh, uh, pulse width modulation, the one shot, 125, multi shot. They all work on basically the same principle of this duty cycle. So you have uh, the percent amount of time that it's on versus the percent amount of time that it's off. And the the longer it's on, the the higher the throttle is. So you know at at zero on up here, we have no throttle. At 25% on, we're doing 25%. At 50%, we're doing 50% throttle, etc. Right. Uh, the limitation with this is you actually can only subdivide this carrier wave uh, into so many uh, divisions, especially when we start to get faster and faster write times. So we get less and less resolution on the number of steps. Uh, I think multi-shot's pretty good. I think we get 500 steps inside of uh, the multi-shot for the resolution, but the, you can only see how wide the wave is to, to the extent of how fast your... Um, how fast the processor is on the ESC. So now let's talk about D-Shot is a completely digital signal. It's a 16-bit uh, signal. Uh, the important part here is the 11-bit throttle. So this basically eliminates all the throttle calibration, all the ESC calibration, all that other crap that we're doing because now it's a, a digital carrier and when we say we want um, you know 1100 milliseconds of, of throttle, we get 1100 milliseconds of throttle. So the 11-bit allows for 2 to the 11th uh, power which is like 2000, 2048 steps of resolution uh, in the throttle and Every ESC is going to get this, the same throttle signal uh, because it's digital instead of analog, and there's no syncing of the ESCs, which can be different for their different uh, clock speeds, and it, it eliminates all that. And, the, and all of this happens in 26 microseconds, this entire 16-bit signal, which is roughly the same time as multi-shot. Uh, the reason I'm bringing this up, that it's 26 microseconds and it's m at the same time as multi-shot, is because inside multi-shot, let's say it was a 99% duty cycle, um, we'd have one rise over here, we'd have one fall, we'd have uh, a pulse signal, and then we'd have the, the next rise, the next fall. Uh, but basically, inside of one, we'd, inside of that 26 microseconds, we would have one rise, one fall to catch. And in this one, we have 16 rises, 16 falls that we're asking the, the microcontroller to catch. So uh, when processing the, the digital signal, you actually have logic zones. So we have a high logic zone up here and a low logic zone down here. So this is anything inside here is considered off. Anything inside here is considered on. So this is a zero. This is a one. Uh, and then this is... The, the the filtering for digital signal. So the way you, that the analog si signal is filtered is with uh, an RC filter. Um, and that the reason we're talking about this is because the RC filter actually has to be removed to make a lot of the um, the old ESCs work with D shot because we're we're turning it on and off so fast. So what this is, the red wave is the signal here and then the black wave is what actually is filtered through the RC filter uh, this is just one example but the reason the reason I wanted to do this is to show that there is the delay between when the red pulse comes up and when it's actually registered as a high signal because the RC filter the way that it works is you have a resistor in line with a capacitor and the capacitor actually has to charge up and it takes time for the capacitor to charge so which is good for our analog signal for reducing noise because we don't want uh, really fast spikes to to jump in and out of our uh, analog signal which would throw off our entire uh, duty cycle so it, it works great for analog but it's not very good for digital because we're shifting uh, the logic zones uh, to the right uh, it wouldn't be that big of a deal like in this instance uh, except for that these arrows are different lengths 
but when we start getting into that 26 microsecond range where we're really really fast uh, what, what ends up happening is you get instead of like this wave where you actually have time for the capacitor to fill charge up and time for the capacitor to discharge you end up with a sawtooth wave where you're you know not charging not discharging not charging not discharging you're actually in this uh, noise realm and, and whatever happens happens right you might bump a little bit into high and then into low uh, or or never reach any of them or continually be in the high realm like uh, so we need the RC filter gone and I'll, I'm going to show you how to take out the RC filter um, so you'll be able to find all of these links in the description this is the main github um, link that shows the where to start with D shot uh, it goes over pretty much all setting the throttle like the calibration uh, the different frequencies for the D shot and then the, the big thing is like which flight controllers are supported here um, the one thing that I thought was interesting was the modal labs uh, I, I like that board so I was, you have to do a special thing to it to make D shot work and I'm just not I'm not even into it that far. I'm going to use a different board. And these are all the ESCs that are supported. Uh, and underneath of a lot of them, they have instructions on how to remove the capacitors. So this is a cap move removal for the Icon ESC, which is my favorite ESC because they did BL Hell Yes. Uh, I like to support Icon where I can. Uh, and th that's the capacitor and resistor that needs to be removed from it. And in this video, I'll go over a little bit more on how to do that. And then the so if you can't figure out which uh, capacitors remove for D-Shot to work um, and it's not listed, I'll show you a little trick here. So uh, the signal comes in, the white wire, right, and I can tell by looking at these, these are the big um, uh, filtering caps for the power. So I'm going to get no continuity on these. So the, with the multimeter in continuity mode touched together, you get the taps, right? So um, I will check. To make sure that I'm touching the signal wire here. So that's the signal wire. So then when I flip it over to this side, I'm still on the signal wire back there. Uh, and I can actually see the trace. I follow it up here and it goes to this, which is a, res uh, a resistor. Uh, I can tell it's a resistor because it's like the black color. Um, and like the, ca the caps, these are um, ceramic capacitors. They're so these are tellenium capacitors, these are ceramic capacitors. Um, it's not going to be one of these. These are usually for power filtering. They're a lot more expensive. It's going to be a ceramic filter for um, for signal filtering. So this one goes into a resistor and it actually comes out the other side of the resistor. Uh, so this is the signal line. So I, I, don't, I can't find anything on uh, that's, that's on the signal line on this side of the resistor. But on this side of the resistor, so now we'll, now we'll, once we trace it in, we'll have this side of the resistor. So this cap is the filter cap for the signal line. So we're going to need to remove that because that is going to. Um, That's going to affect the rising edge uh, and falling edge of our signal line on the, the digital D shot. So bear with me here a second, I'll remove that. This is what it looks like with the capacitor removed off the Icon ESC. Now we need to go and download the latest version of Betaflight. So go to the link in the description download the latest version of Betaflight. Uh, it's probably going to be, it gets updated like almost every two hours it seems like. Uh, so yours will probably be a slightly different version than this, but grab the, the zip file here, download and save that. Once you've downloaded the latest version of Betaflight, go to the Betaflight configurator. Now we're going to load firmware local instead of load firmware online like the normal way. Uh, we're going to go to wherever the file was saved and unpacked and grab the hex that is correct for your board. In this case, I'm using an X-Racer F303, which is the X-Racer SPI version. So I'm going to open that, and I'm going to flash firmware, and then it'll flash just like you normally do.
once you've flashed it, you can check to see that your latest beta flight was successful by connecting. Go to the CLI, you can type in a version. You can see that it's the the 3.10 version, and then under configuration, you can actually see here. Uh oh, here's the magic D shot 150, 300, 600. So we'll select 600, save, and now you're D shotting at least on your board. Next thing, next step is to do the ESCs. Okay, so now we've got the latest. We'll go to the download D shot in the link. We'll download the zip file. You're going to download it and unpack it just like a zip file. And we'll go back to the uh, BL Heli suite. We're going to flash BL Heli. We'll go to wherever we saved that latest file. We're going to click ignore and pick from the list. That's how it's different than normal. So we'll, we'll flip through the BL Heli master. There is a file in here called DSHOT test code. So now it's all revision 16.43. Uh, now I moved this window out of the way uh, to see the CH15. It's very important that you that you keep the same revision. So CH15, CH15, it matches. I'll pick that one. I'll open it. Uh, it I'm checking again that it matches. Yep. I'm going to flash it. One thing that I didn't mention with removing the capacitors is that, oh, see this? It didn't respond. You can that's normal don't you know there it, it came back it flashed right so one thing I didn't mention with removing the capacitors is now you can't use any other mode than D shot you're pretty much committed at that point so okay we'll check to see if it's working we'll go connect oh first you have to go to uh, the BL heli configurator uh, and disconnect before you can connect through your flight controller again so we'll connect to the flight controller Go to the configuration, show you that I'm still on DShot here. Uh, so it is running DShot 600. We will go to the Motors tab. You can click that I understand with your props off. And then start scrolling it up. Now you're DShotting. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And hopefully there will be more videos like this in the future.